So as the schedule has slowed down, so have so has Antelope Valley. And that it makes some sense when you're playing in these tournaments where you're playing possibly two games in a day, three games in two days. When you have the depth of Antelope Valley, that's a huge advantage in that type of situation. Now that's muted a little bit when you're only playing twice a week. And there's a lot more intensity and, uh, you know, when you're into a league situation. Uh, Looks like they're having a little bit of scoreboard issues here. They're trying to get the clock up to 20 minutes to start the second half, and they're kind of fighting it a little bit. And it's Rich Hughes over there giving some scoreboard operating <laughs> instructions. That is a fancy jacket, as Lewis is commenting on. That's actually Christy Hill on the clock there. She's the softball coach out here, head softball coach uh, for the program out here. It's going to be on the Renegade Report Show tomorrow, I understand. BC Renegade Report Show, 11 a.m. every Thursday on Bakersfield.com. We'll have more basketball for you as the season progresses as well. About another month to go for these teams. Empty possession for the Renegades to begin the second half. But they get the stop on the other end. And here, come, here comes BC Moore to Revere. A nifty pass and a better finish. Jameek Revere. You know, I like the fact that he faked a pass uh, and drew the defense away from Revere there for just a split second. Back to a 16-point lead for BC. They've led by as many as 17 in this game. That was at 33-16. It's been a double-digit lead most of the way. Jumper good for Chris Martin. A nice-looking jump shot there. He clearly is a really good player. You watch him play the way he handles himself on the court. You can tell he can play. BC perhaps content to play at a slightly slower tempo with a big lead, but obviously a lot of time to be thinking that way. Lawrence Moore's three bangs out, but a rebound for Christie. And there's Moore to clean up the trash. A loose ball situation there. Falls to Moore. That's twice Christie's lost the ball, and both times BC recovered it, and both times they were it set up uh, offensive plays on the other end. And Lawrence Moore now with eight points for the Renegades. So only one guy in double figures. That's Pendleton, or that's Velasquez, excuse me. But a lot of guys are right there, and the Renegades, at this point, I would be surprised if they don't finish with six players in double figures. Dixon got the rebound off the block and put it home, and you mentioned he didn't have a whole lot of rebounds at the half. He's got two here early in the second half. He's got now 10 points, and it's an 18-point lead for BC, their biggest of the night. Antelope Valley going to keep it here upon further review. They One trail by 18 with 18 to go. One referee overruled the other is what happened there. Open from the right wing, but missing the jumper there, Gregory Wesley. Not as high a percentage shot as his thunderous dunk in the first half. Velasquez, he's been hot, he's got another one. He missed a couple open ones late in the half. As you mentioned, Jeff, not that time. Now your lead is 21, first time it's gotten into the 20s. And Rich Hughes stomping his foot, asking for a defensive stop. The intensity with his team up 21. Martin dives in high off the glass, won't get it. Another rebound for Dixon. Christie was trying to cherry pick there. The defense got back, but Christie scores anyway. That's just tacking it, taking it right to the basket, attacking the defense. And now Amy's got a force to call timeout. Tacking the defense before the defense can get set. Very, very heady play there on both ends. A nice pass by Revere to set it up. Well, Rich Hughes was disappointed with the way the Renegades played on Saturday at Glendale. He can be nothing but thrilled with what they've done thus far tonight. 58-35 to over Antelope Valley in a battle for first place in the Western State Conference. This is, uh, this is a, a route right now. Well, it's, it's actually, there's going to be, there's four teams tied for first coming into tonight. So uh, uh, it is a battle for first it's place. It's a battle in to stay in first still, place, there's, yeah. a long, there's a long way to go in the league season. And, uh, um, and uh, you know, there very well could be, okay, it's a four-way tie for first. Now they'll drop to a three-way tie maybe after tonight. 
But again, there's a long way to go. Be fun to maybe go over to Lancaster and check out when these two teams play over there. Something tells me it wouldn't be a 20 point game in Lancaster, at least not in BC's favor, but it's hard to believe it's a 20 point game here in anybody's favor. Loose ball on the floor, corralled by AV, but then lost. Coming away with it is Moore. He feeds to Revere. The cross court pass, it's a 25 point lead. What a brilliant pass that was. Lawrence Moore telling Revere, hey, I can, I can give as well as I can receive. 60 to 35, Renegades, 16, 19 to play. Jumper is true, that was a rainbow and a pretty one for Corey Dollarhide. That one brought, that one brought rain. Shades of Lynn Shackelford, if anybody remembers the old UCLA player from the 60s. Nobody who remembers him knows how to use the internet. <laughs> That's not true. Almost, though. Revere up top, four seconds on the shot clock suddenly. First time we've said that tonight. And a foul with one second left on the shot clock as Christie went for the jumper. Well, he had no choice but to force the shot. And, um, and Antelope Valley knew it and fouled him anyway. You know, it looked like a kind of a pretty good play there. I, but again, whenever you're going up, it's very easy to you know, catch somebody on the arm. So BC led 47-33 at the half. They opened the second half with a 13-2 run. 11 of 13 free throws for the Gades in the first half. Uh, missed that first attempt. Now 11 points for the freshman Shane Christie and a 24 point Renegades lead. Long three for Dollarhide, won't go. Needed to get more of that rainbow on at that time and Dixon another rebound. Well, he's the one who's only missed one free throw all year, and I figured, well, you know what, if somebody can get a hot hand, that's way maybe AV figures that's the way they're going to really get back in this thing. DeAndre Dixon's catching up on those rebounds you mentioned. He's got, I think, four here in the second half already. Revere taking his time. There's no doubt the Renegades are taking up some time here with a huge lead, bleeding the clock down under 10 seconds now, and Revere scores almost an excuse-me layup by Jameek Revere. I think... He wanted the pass until the last minute and then just sort of shoved the ball at the basket and it went in. Well, he didn't have a lot of choice. It was about to two seconds on the shot clock, so there was not a lot of time left. I'll tell you what, when it's working, it's working. And right now for the Renegades, it's working. A 26-point lead against the number 12 team in the state, right? Uh, number 8, 13 in the state. Number 13, 80, number 13. 14, 36 to play, and it is a 26-point Renegades lead. They called it, looks like there was a mix up on who got, uh, whose ball was out of bounds, but they called a foul, and I don't know who the foul was on. And it's DeAndre Dixon. Second foul on Dixon. Uh, so not, not really a concern yet. Maybe if he picked up another quick one, you'd start to worry about that if you're Rich Hughes. 14 33 to play. Well, his presence inside is such a. Well, it forces, it forces shots like that, doesn't it? And then he cleans up the glass against two opponents. Five well, second half rebounds well, now. He's, you know, he, he's, had, he's altered shots so much inside tonight. And that's when you're 6'9", you do that. And that's been such a huge factor. Moore, that time, Christie wasn't looking and he laughs. You can laugh when you're up by 26. Another nifty looking pass for Moore. Boy, he's right up there with Revere as far as the ideas he creates, the plays he can create with his vision. Moore, he's been cold tonight. Another one way short on a fadeaway three. Yeah, I think AV starting to press. I mean, press not meaning press the defense. But pressing or or on the on newspaper, offense. not the AV press. Yeah. <laughs> they're trying, you know, they're, they're, they're pressing a little on offense and they're, you know, forcing shots a little bit. But Moore and Dollarhide, their two leading scorers, are, have been really pretty quiet tonight. And look at DeAndre Dixon battling inside. 
He'll get the hoop and the arm. He'll go to the line. And DeAndre Dixon, despite a slow start, is on pace for a very productive evening. This lead is gonna, it could be 29 if he hits his free throw. And just, uh, it's just an unbelievable start to the second half for the Renegades. Dixon now with 12 points. And by my count, he's got eight or nine rebounds as well. So he, he started slow, but he's going to, I would guess, finish right around his average is 17 points and 10 rebounds, 10, 11 rebounds. Free throw won't go for him, but it is 65-37 BC. They've opened up this second half with an 18-4 advantage. So they've doubled their halftime lead in just six and a half minutes. What a performance for Rich Hughes' club. Into the paint, couldn't get it. That was Abed Ozis with the rebound for Brandon Wade, and now Moore missed it from close range. Boy, AV can't get anything to go. Finally, on the third, fourth attempt, Brandon Moore gets it to go. Or Joseph Moore, pardon me. Gets Rich it Hughes to go. is calling for a foul, saying there's a push off, knocking De DeAndre Dixon away from the board there. And uh, he's, he's saying it to his bench, but he's making sure the official is seeing it. That's one of those, those messages, you're telling your team that this is going on, but they're making sure that you're, you're directing the voice right. the vocal cords toward the official. That's not necessarily whom the message is intended for. Well, regardless, at this point, barring a disaster, frankly, Bakersfield College is going to have itself a very nice victory tonight. They lead 65-39, still 13.08 to play, and a team that can score a lot of points quickly, but... Uh, BC would have to just go completely ice cold at this point, you would think. Well, the one thing that usually happens in these games is that a team will make a run, and the question is, AV hasn't really made that run yet, and if they're, um, if they're able to do that and at least, you know, you kind of get some semblance of chipping it away to maybe get it around 13, 14, 15, you know, uh, 15 is a lot. If you get it down 12, you know, right in there, and you've got five, six minutes to go, then, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, but if Bakersfield continues with this intensity and converting shots, uh, you know, then that just slams the door on Annabelle Valley, prevents that from happening. Well, and you're talking about needing a run to get it within 12, and there's only 13 minutes left now, so at that point you need another run to get it back within two or four, and then another run to finish the game. I mean, that's, uh, boy, it's, it's a difficult thing to do, a long, long road back for Antelope Valley. And Antelope Valley is now going to be pressuring full court, it appears, trying to, you know, again, I think it's wise to do that, try to create some turnovers, and I sure. guess it's going to be tough to do that when you have the guard play that Bakersfield has. They were down 14 at the half. That was somewhat manageable. 26 with 13 minutes left, not so much. And that's the other problem is if you're physical, you're going to get into some foul trouble here as well. That's only the third team foul of the half. But again, if you're AV, you got to try to create some things. And again, that does what that the flip side of that, it will create some opportunities on the other end. You get down, maybe you have a two on one, three on one advantage. Nifty ball movement from the Renegades, and Lawrence Moore with the up and under won't go. Not even close on that shot. So AV does get a stop there, down 26, 1246 to play. Moore is bothering. His man there, but it did not affect Kenneth Moffitt. The sophomore gets into the paint and scores. 65-41. And again, the Renegades content to take some time off of the clock. Right there, it was mostly breaking the press and then settling down, and now, now you can run in your offense, your half-court offense. 10 on the shot clock here as Revere dribbles on the right wing. Now he will take Moffitt to the hoop. Out for Velasquez, splash down. And you know, again, you, they sucked in and it was wide open. Again, he missed a few of those in the first half. But if you're a three-point shooter, that corner shot's your favorite shot. Jameek Revere dropping another dime. And Kenneth, excuse me, Nick Velasquez with another three-pointer, 68-41. It's all working tonight for the Renegades. Martin into the hole, draws the foul. He'll go to the line. First free throws of the second half coming up for Antelope Valley with 11.48 to play. Moore called for the foul there. That's his third, I believe.
Martin hits one of two from the line. 68-42. And again, BC breaking the press with relative ease. It's Velasquez dishing it to the freshman Christie who has the deuce. Well, that's the fast breaks that a foul on the other end, but you 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 talk you called it, Jeff. I mean, as soon as they go to full court press, you're you're really playing right into the hands of a team that likes to play fast, that has the guards and the ball handlers, uh, and as long as they kind of keep their wits about them, BC is going to get a lot of fast break looks. Lawrence Moore just got his fourth foul. That uh, he's going to have to come out. Pendleton will come in for him. He's, Pendleton had he's got three fouls. So uh, Pendleton had nine points on three first half threes. He hasn't scored here in the second. Turnover, turnover, stepped out of bounds. Bakersfield trapped him in the corner. They got the ball in bound but in the corner and a trap. And, uh, and, and a Valley coach arguing that there was some contact in there, but uh, it didn't. It was a pretty clean play. He's got his got his hands out, got his eyebrows raised, like you know, what are you going to do? A bucket here, Mr. Evans, and the Renegades will be up by 30 points. And DeAndre Dixon is going to do it in style. From the free throw line, DeAndre Dixon throwing down. That's a three-on-one fast break. Like, pick your poison if you're the one guy back. Don't pick that. Maybe you don't have a choice. Rick, Rich, Rich wants timeout. Maybe he's signaling. And oh. Dixon again on the alley-oop from Revere. It's a street ball game now for Bakersfield that's College. What, that's what Rich was signaling. He was signaling for that lob play from the bench. He was signaling. I looked like it was a timeout call, but that must be their signal. Going the other way, and the bucket with the foul there for Brandon Wade for Antelope Valley. And he will kind of put a damper on all the fun everybody was having here in the uh, Gil Bishop Sports Center. That there, and I know there's still almost 11 minutes left in this game, that was the exclamation point to this game. A 30-point lead on a monstrous dunk for DeAndre Dixon. That's something a lot of guys wouldn't try in a dunk contest. And then he follows it up, slamming home the alley-oop from Jameek Revere. And that's what the people come to see is Revere to Dixon. Well, it was a lot of fun watching these two guys play. And uh, no big mystery that these are two of the better players that have been at Bakersfield College in recent years. Free throw good for Wade. It's a three-point play. 74-45, Bakersfield. And again, the press from the Marauders. And again, BC is going to be able to break it with ease and get themselves a two-on-one. And looking for the three-point play there was Velasquez. He'll go to the line instead. You know, that's they're breaking this press with such ease, and it's creating golden opportunities on the other end. You're either going to score a layup or you're going to get fouled. Velasquez with 16 points now and looking to add to it. And he only averages 11.7 per game, so that average going up by quite a bit tonight. There's number 17 for him. Rich is still pretty animated down there on the sidelines. You would think that this game was a five-point game rather than a 30-point game. He was fired up for this one. You can tell that much. 76-45. Renegades all over the 17 and 2 Antelope Valley Marauders. Foul away from the ball. Trayvon Armstrong got the foul there. Freshman guard who did not play in the first half. Gives Bakersfield another ball, kit, ball handler out there to help against this pressing defense. Inbounds pass to Wade. 76-45, Renegades by 31. Wade will launch a three and can't get it to go. No press this time from Antelope Valley, I think, at some point. Well, you don't, John you, Taylor you don't, realized that, yeah, that you, wasn't working. You, well, your press actually only on a, as for a basket. You well, normally sure, would not uh, sure. on a missed shot. So we'll see if that continues, I guess, after the next Antelope Valley make. But it, <laughs> point being, it wasn't working. Into the paint goes Trevon Armstrong, the product of Golden Valley High School. Can't get it to go. 
And going the other way is Jalen Etienne with the bucket. He's had a nice little game. Kind of still setting up a trap at half court. Trying to double, double the ball up high. Good ball movement by the Renegades here. Down to five on the shot clock. Dixon was asking for another lob. He didn't get it from Revere. And instead, it's Armstrong, the local boy from Golden Valley, with the three from the right wing. See him slap his hands together there. He's pretty fired up to get well, that he, shot. You know what? He's a freshman. He's only playing four minutes a game. And, and that's, that's a nice moment for a young man in his hometown. 79-47. Jumper goes for Etienne. He continues to score. Now we're down inside of nine, and again, we're looking up, it's still that 30-point deficit. Bearsville's been able to respond to any challenge that AV's made. Dixon dribbling in the corner. He's the one guy they probably don't want handling the ball against pressure. So Velasquez looking for another one. It rimmed out on him. Revere claps for it again. He'll reset, and there's the lob. <laughs> it was just a little bit too low for another DeAndre Dixon special. Now they can run another few seconds off. Again, a lot of time left, but a lot of... Velasquez is stepping on the line out of bounds. Eight minutes, 12 seconds to play, but uh, it's all academic at this point. 79-49, Bakersfield College. Etienne, a nifty move with a head shake, but he couldn't get it to go. Dixon, another rebound, and then he's called for steps. He fell down and didn't, didn't keep his pivot foot there. You know, I've ever tried to do that. It's awful hard to keep your pivot foot down when you're flying backwards. Well, usually, if you give the ball up without trying to get back up, they will give you that, but I think they said he may have shuffled his feet on the way down. I so. think he also had one foot up in the air, and I think once that happens... Dixon's off the field. I wonder if he's done for the night. It's just got a nice ovation from uh, his teammates in the crowd. Well, I'll tell you what, when you see him fall like that, if you're Rich Hughes and kind of bang his elbow on the ground, you say, you know what, we're up by 30. I kind of need that guy for the rest of the season. And he's already got a banged up hand. You don't want him to aggravate it and you know, maybe create a exactly. bigger problem. Exactly, and Dixon with 16 points, just below his average. And uh, again, we don't have an exact rebound total in front of us. I, he's, he's right around nine or 10 rebounds. So he's had a productive night. We'll see if he does come back in or not. Etienne, again, a nifty move. And the finish, 79-51, 7.45 to play. And as you noted, they have pulled back from the press after uh, Bakersfield got a lot of easy stuff. If anything, it would be tougher to press him now because when Dixon goes out, now you've got a smaller, quicker lineup out there. Not that Dixon isn't quick, but uh, you've got smaller guys that can really move and find the gaps a little bit easier. You know, you wonder, uh, Jeff, while we're on the subject of DeAndre Dixon, and I mentioned this to you last night, and I haven't seen him play a lot as Christy turnaround jumper won't go. Is DeAndre Dixon a guy that the Cal State Roadrunners would want? And of course, when you talk about a Division I school, academics are always a question. And we, uh, a lot of times, a guy's in junior college because of academic questions, so that has to be addressed. But uh, Rod Barnes has not been averse to taking transfers, to taking junior college transfers. Diedrich Basil is having a lot of success as a JUCO transfer this year. And, and you just wonder, is, is Dixon on the Roadrunner's radar? Well, the only question I would have is he's already 23 years old, and you start dealing with that age consideration at the, uh, at the Division I level. Um, but uh, I know that, um, I do know that uh, Justin Hudson, the former Bakersfield High School player, coach, former Cal State player, um, and now an assistant coach at San Diego State, was here uh, the last home came, and he did talk to DeAndre after the game. So you not would, that would tell me that, in the very least, he's on the uh, San Diego State radar. And if, if he's on the San Diego State radar, you can bet they're not the only ones because they, they can afford to be choosy with the way that program has been. Christie's at the line, and speaking of Cal State Bakersfield, the rest of the week, uh, basketball-wise in this town, is going to be about the Roadrunners. They play... UT Rio Grande Valley tomorrow night at the Icardo Center at 6 o'clock, and then 7 o'clock Saturday night they play New Mexico State. And really, I, I don't know that I'm exaggerating by saying it's the biggest regular season game in their Division I history for CSUB. 
You, well, you would know better than I, but I don't. Well, think you know, I start thinking was it that game or is it maybe in the you know WAC tournament last year when they played them? Well, uh, I mean regular season though. That's got to be it, right? Well, you know, it's. Yeah, I mean, you could say that because it's you know it's 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 the, the more. But I look back when they played Fresno State, their first Division One game ever, and they won that game at Rival Maker Arena sure. before four thousand people in a great atmosphere, and they're going to have close to that tomorrow night. They're at Cardo Center holds 3,600, or excuse me, not tomorrow night, Saturday night. They, they expect the sell out there. And it should be, uh, you know, a, a very competitive game and a game uh, with a, a first place on the line, assuming both of those teams win tomorrow night. New Mexico State has to play at Seattle. Well, the one thing it does uh, is that you've got a, a program that's really trying to show that they are among the elite in the Western Athletic Conference. And they have never beaten New Mexico State in the program's history. They had one game in Bakersfield where it was a they had a one-point lead and less than five seconds to go, and there was a foul on the, on the, you know, three quarters of a court away from New Mexico State, and that was and New Mexico State hit two free throws to wind up winning that game. That was, um, but uh, so much that Dixon is back in the game, so so much for us suggesting that maybe he was done for the night. Just gave him a little bit of a breather there. Yeah, DeAndre Dixon back in the game and. Firing a three is Wade, and that will miss everything. Shades of the AV women's game tonight. <laughs> the AV uh, women losing to BC 73-66. They were three of 20 from three-point range. Uh, are you saying it was tipped, Lewis? Oh, he's you're just getting on Jeff for getting on the uh, AV women there. That was a turnover and a nice finish by Joseph Moore off of the steal. Lead back down to 25. Six minutes to play. Velasquez, yes sir. From the right side and Rich Hughes wants a timeout and you do wonder if this is maybe where the starters start to come out for Bakersfield College. 82 to 54. That the fifth three pointer of the night for Nick Velasquez and he has 19 points, actually 21 points in this game. to lead the way for the Renegades. 82-54, and the uh, BC men gonna improve to 15-4, and four, and they will be 4-1 and one in the Western State Conference. We assume tied for first. We don't know the results of the other league games, but uh, a couple of other teams tied there at 3-1 and one heading into this one. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, this is one of those statement games. You know, if you're Biggers for college, you know, this is, again, Rich Hughes had talked about, you've, to win this conference, you've gotta go through Animal Valley. They've been the dominant team in the last four years. This is the program that really focuses on men's basketball. You know how you always talk about, well, some schools focus on football. Bakersfield College is one, and everybody says, well, they're a football f focus there. And, well, AV is, the f they focus on basketball at Animal Valley College. And, uh, and to come in here and, and, you know, and, and, and beat a team that has been the power in this league and have a, you know, a game that's been around 30 points deficit for almost the whole entire second half, that's a statement. Yeah, and you, you say you got to go through Antelope Valley. Well, they went right through them tonight. 82-54, still five minutes and 50 seconds left in this game. And the starter's still out there for BC after that timeout for Rich Hughes. So Velasquez, Dixon, Moore, Pendleton, the sixth man, and Revere all out on the floor. A little bit surprising. I, am. I mean, BC's got a big roster. They could certainly make a line change here. And the lead is big enough to where even with AV's scoring capabilities, as Lennard puts that one in, you probably don't have to worry at this point about just about anything. And Moore will score going to the hole. Well, we're 521 to go. I would think that once you get around inside of five, round four, I mean, I would think, uh, you know, you would think that that might be when you'll see these guys coming out. And it's, it, you know, you could say calling, call it calling off the dogs or whatever you want to, but the, really what you're doing is avoiding injury. You don't want a freak injury in the last four minutes of a game that's already been decided. Etienne will pull up and he's short on the three. Pendleton rebounds. 84-56, BC by 28. We have gone under the five minute mark here in the second half. Zach Ewing, Jeff Evans, Lewis Amistoy at the Gil Bishop Sports Center here on Bakersfield.com. This is BC Athletics on Bakersfield.com. Revere in, he gets fouled. You can check out the Renegade Report right back here on Bakersfield.com tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., host Francis Mayer. He's talking about having Rich Hughes on, Christy Hill, the softball coach. Um, 
And I'm trying to remember who else he said he had. Uh, oh, the I think he has a tennis coach uh, going to be, I think the plan is to have, uh, you know, the spring sports are just around the corner. Uh, yeah, just at the end, just a week away, right? Or 10 days yeah, away? Yeah, yeah, usually, well, let's see, we're talking usually early February. So maybe two weeks. Revere misses the free throw. Revere's been somewhat quiet tonight, but uh, he has been right there with the assists. I would suspect. And you know what? I say that he's got 12 points as well. Yeah, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we see if his assists are, you know, into the double digits a little bit when they have a game like this. Misses rare, both free throws there. Two on one the other way. And it is Etienne who will finish. He is Antelope Valley's leading scorer tonight. Etienne with 14 points. Chris Martin has 10 for the Marauders. 4-13 to play now. 26-point Renegades lead. Revere to Pendleton. Back to Jamique Revere from Queens, New York. Oh, what a play. And you give, you go, you get it back, and you get the deuce. No look pass from Moore. That was a brilliant pass. Moore and Revere are tons of fun to watch, and that doesn't even include DeAndre Dixon. He's at the bench, I would assume, for the rest of the night now. C.J. Johnson in the game. There's a three-pointer for Moore. That is the first three-pointer of the half for Antelope Valley, and only their second of the entire game. And that's, that's one reason why this game hasn't been competitive. I mean, BC's played well enough to win regardless, but Antelope Valley needed to shoot the ball better than that. Yeah, and they've been struggling offensively. Um Revere, this time returning the favor over to Moore. Chalk up three points for Lawrence Moore and chalk up another assist for Jameek Revere. Now you got to wonder if they're going to maybe have a shot at 100 points in this game. They're at 89 with 3.03 to play. They'd have to hurry, but they have <laughs> that's not a problem for them if they decide to go for it. Inside to Moore, he scores again. He's going to finish with a, a pretty good scoring line that might not be representative of what he's done. He's now got 13 points. Foul called against Antelope Valley and going to the line now for a one and one will be a Revere. You know, kind of a quiet crowd, you know. This is a great win for the Renegades and uh, you know, you don't really see a lot of reaction from the audience out here tonight. Yeah, you're right. And maybe more people will, will get on uh, the bandwagon here as they start to, uh, as they start to, to prove that they are a team to be reckoned with. Before that make there by Revere, BC was just three of nine from the charity stripe in the second half after 11 of 13 in the first half. So they could be closer to 100 points already. Some poor free throw shooting in the second half. Not much else to complain about. Revere one of two there, 90 to 63. With 2.44 to play. Well, it's funny because the crowd was pretty fired up when they had those, that, those, that lob dunk to Dixon and then the uh, breakaway Lot, you know, dunk. I got people fired up in the Twitter sphere as well, Jeff. I know you're uh, you're a big denizen of the Twitter sphere. <laughs> well, you're you're yelling pretty good when you're describing it. I got into it, man. I got into it. That was that was a dunk contest, dunk in live action. You don't get to call those very often. Fouled on the way up and headed to the line now. Heading to the line will be Kashawn Mack, the freshman for Antelope Valley. Lewis reminded me of quite possibly the greatest dunk call of all time, which belongs to our Trevor Horn. I hope you're watching, Trevor. Trevor's nursing a, an injured back, and we hope to have him back next week. But uh, that was a big dunk. I can't even say I, I can't even do it justice, so I, I won't <laughs> even try. But Trevor's call to the Garces Holiday Hoops Challenge in high school ball last year. <laughs> Dathan Towns, by the way, is into the game for BC here. The Renegades turn it over. And Antelope Valley will go back to the line after the basket good. Again for Kashawn Mack. 
Bakersfield College calls timeout. Rich wants to kind of tell his guys. Uh, Let's finish this the right way, I think, would be the message. Yeah, he's, well, he's got, you know, all his backups are in now. And Dathan Towns, a uh, little tidbit, his father, Donald Towns, was uh, an outstanding player at Cal State Bakersfield in the uh, early days of the Renegade program, back in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, well, there you go. There you go. Dathan Towns, a product of Bakersfield Christian. So the family obviously stuck around Kern County. And I, uh, I believe since the starters left the game for BC, if I'm looking at the right point in my timeline here, it's been a 6-1 advantage for Antelope Valley. So obviously those backups dealing with the speed of the game a little bit, still a very comfortable 90-67 to advantage for the Renegades. And Antelope Valley's backups are in as well. These are not their starters. Three-point play completed there by Mack, and it's 90-68. to Lead was as much as 32 points tonight, and it was 32 points right after those back-to-back -back Jameek Revere dunks to make it 74-42. to There's a timeout by the Renegades as uh, Tavron Armstrong got trapped and uh, had to call timeout. Uh, really didn't have anywhere to go with the ball. There was nobody really there. So, you know, Bears was having uh, a little bit of a struggle on offense now, which now that the... Uh, you know, you got your the, the sink uh, not really in sync now with the backup players. But again, I think if you're Rich Hughes, you ha you have to remember resist the temptation to put, I would say, even one starter back in uh, at, at this point to sort of grease the wheels, so to speak, because you just don't. There's no point in risking that injury with just two minutes and 21 seconds to play. As long as you can get these backups to break a press, you'll be okay. Well, they practice this all you know all the time, so you'd like to. And this really, this is the opportunity you give kids. I mean, what if you need one of these guys in a game this year because of an injury or you know foul sure. trouble or whatever? This is absolutely. Ball inbounded to Armstrong. He's double teamed in the corner and he needs some help. Having trouble finding it now. Back to help him out. That was Sean Lafleur coming back, and I believe that's a 10-second call against the Renegades. Is that what they called? What they called was, uh, it was the referee made an error there because when Bakersfield called timeout, there was about 25 seconds left on the shot clock. But then you get a fresh 10 when you, uh, on an inbound there. Um, and the referee there did not give him the fresh 10, so. Yeah, I thought that was a quick 10 second call. A charge called, an offensive foul called against J.C. Broussard there. I, throwing an elbow, I guess, was the call. And so another B.C. turnover here. Tight defense there, and he kind of pushed off to try to knock the defender away, and that was, uh, can't do that. Well, Rich Hughes and Aaron Chavez right now, all they want to do is get out of this game. Two minutes to go, a 22-point lead. And uh, lucky for BC, that shot does not fall, but Mack is going to go back to the line. Kashawn Mack piling up some points off the bench here. He's talking now to Jameek Revere and Lawrence Moore, and uh, looks like he's going to put them both back in the game. So Rich Hughes does not resist putting those two back in the game, at least to handle the ball and maybe telling them, be careful, don't get in any situations where you can get bumped to the floor. Of course, athletes will tell you, trying not to get hurt can be a good way to get hurt because you do things you wouldn't normally do with your body. Second free throw, no good. So. We'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, uh, there's so now, only a so minute now you, now what you to do play. Is you, now you get little, let more Revere try to break the press. And, and then just take time off the clock is, is what you would do. Moore collects the inbounds pass from Revere. And they do easily get across the timeline this time. And now they will just take time off the clock. 20 seconds still on the shot clock here. A minute 40 to go in the game. 90 to 69 Renegades. Circus shot tried there and missed by J.C. Brossard. Rebound Antelope Valley. And the jumper again, Kashawn Mack piling up the points late with a jumper there. And the lead back within 20 for the first time since the early stages of the second half. 90-71, but just 67 seconds left and a foul called against Antelope Valley.
So Revere to the line for a one and one. Misses another free throw, rims out, and he has missed quite a few tonight. Yeah, if he hits his free throws, he'd be up there at his average. I think he's a little shy of it tonight. Revere coming into tonight was a 65% free throw shooter. So th that's one weakness as a point guard that uh, he'll have to sh shore up if he adds to the Division I level. You like to see the guy who handles the ball late in games and breaks that press be closer over 70, closer to 75 preferably. Under a minute to play, 90 to 71. Jumper no good. C.J. Johnson with the rebound. And now A.V. will back off. Yeah, well, maybe they will foul. Dathan Towns the reverse layup for his first points. The assist to Trevon Armstrong. Get another player in the game who hasn't been out there yet. That was a timeout Bakersfield just strictly to make a substitution. 36.4 seconds to go. The score BC 92, Antelope Valley 71. This is BC Athletics on Bakersfield.com. Antelope Valley came in here and BC is going to send them home with a big welt. The three-pointer from Corey Dollarhide over there. He's their leading scorer. He's been quiet tonight. He does get the three there. 18.2 seconds to go as the ball is knocked out of bounds. So a sloppy finish for BC, but all in all, Jeff, this is uh, this is the performance Rich Hughes was looking for tonight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, you know, again, he knew the team knew he had the team's capability of doing this, but uh, again, beating a, a team like this this effectively is just pretty impressive. And the exclamation point came with about seven minutes left in this game. DeAndre Dixon back-to-back -back dunks to make it a 30-point lead at 74-42. From that point, it's really been a coast job on BC's part. And the three-pointer taken and made it the buzzer by Arthur Tondon. And that got the biggest reaction of the night from the BC bench. He hits a three at the buzzer and creates your final score for Bakersfield College 95 and for Antelope Valley College 74. They waved that basket off? I guess they must have. Which oh I don't, boy, they didn't count like, it. It looked like it was before. The Oh, they okay, they counted it now. So your final score is Bakersfield College 95, Antelope Valley College 74. Jeff, we know you got work to do to get the uh, story in the paper, but give me your final thoughts on this one. Well, I mean, just the uh, to come out here and just have that, that big run in the early in the second half, in the early in the first half, to really open it up, and then not to let Antelope Valley get back in the game. That's the most impressive thing because you know teams always make runs. You always talk about that, and you know coaches talk about it. And they never let A.V. make a run. I mean, maybe they, they made a run in the last two minutes, but by then you're down 30, and it's, you know, it's, it's, the game's over. So uh, great win. I think it's going to be a real interesting game when they go back over in Lancaster and play this in the second half of the conference season. Yeah, we all know Western State Conference play is no picnic. It's going to be a grind, but B.C. remains tied for the conference lead. They are 15-4 overall. They are now 4-1 and one in WSC play. Antelope Valley loses for just the third time. The Marauders fall to 17 and 3. They are 3 and 2 in the WSC. This has been BC Athletics on Bakersfield.com for our producer Lewis Amistoy and for Jeff Evans. I'm Zach Ewing. Good night, everybody.